Hey, good morning. Hope you're doing well. Hope Thanksgiving was great for you. Maybe you've even set up the Christmas tree. We have uh, one up in our living room and uh, one laid out in our basement ready to set up. Just need a little more time there. Hope it's been a great holiday with Thanksgiving and then looking forward to the start of the Christmas season. And uh, this is actually the message I was planning to speak and preach to uh, our kids and teens this morning in our youth Sunday school. But uh, because of a COVID test, positive test here in the church, we were... Uh, decided to uh, go online only today. So I wanted to go ahead and share this this morning. Hope it'll be a blessing to you, maybe even for kids, teens, even adults in place of Sunday school. Maybe you can even think of someone you could share it with that it would be a blessing to as we start really in many ways the Christmas season. Maybe for you that started a little while back. Maybe for you, you don't want to put that tree up. But regardless of your decorating strategy or gift buying, I hope this will be a help to you to focus our attention on our Savior. And I want to look at this idea. God keeps His promises no matter what, even if His plans take a long time, even if they take longer than we sh think they should. Even if God takes longer to fulfill his promises than we think he should. And boys and girls, teens, adults watching, I hope you'll take time, if you haven't recently, to dig into the Bible and remember what God promises us. He's got great things in store for us. He wants to do amazing, awesome things. And really, if you're like, well, what's an example? Well, he promises that he will take us to heaven one day. If we have Jesus as our Savior, he promises a home in heaven for us. And if Jesus is our Savior, he promises that his Holy Spirit, that God is living inside us right now. He promises that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. We can have confidence that everything God says he'll do, he will do. So as we get into this Christmas season, I want to look way back in the Old Testament in Jeremiah 23 and verse 5, about 600 or so years before Jesus ever came. Rough patch for the nation of Israel and Judah. They're split. It's two countries right now, and they're not doing well. And this is the promise that God speaks to them right in the middle of that difficult time. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper. In other words, King David, he was awesome. He ruled over a united nation of Israel. He was a great king. His great, 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 600 worth, years worth of greats. Grandson from his family tree, that grandson is going to be Jesus. Now, I don't think this verse names him by name, but it would be the Messiah. He would rule and reign. Now, when Jesus came, he didn't immediately become the ruler. He didn't overthrow the Roman government. He did something far more important in earning our salvation, paying for our salvation on the cross. And one day he will reign over all of the earth. He's already in control, but he will be the earthly ruler and reigner one day. But a king shall come and shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. The Lord our righteousness, Jesus our Savior, did come about 600 years later, and we celebrate His birth, and we can remember that if God promised it, it's going to happen. Now, I like promises. I, I always do my best to keep my promises. I hope you do as well. But uh, we're not perfect, but God is. If you mail out a letter, you put a stamp on it, it's kind of like a promise from the post office to get it to where you sent it. I actually grabbed this from our church office a moment ago. I will put it back. But this is a letter from the Jerkbergs, some missionaries we get to support. And uh, their sending church or their agency mailed it out of uh, Florida, not too far from where my wife grew up in, uh, in Lakeland, Florida. A lot of lakes in Florida, so so many towns are named after lakes. My wife grew up in Lakeland, or not in Lakeland, but in Lake Wales, Florida. So many lakes down there. It's beautiful. But uh, they sent this out to our church here in Virginia and many other churches and put a stamp on it, counting on the post office to send it. And the post office nailed it. They did a great job. I appreciate our U.S. Postal Service. Use it all the time. But they're not perfect. Boys and girls, teens, adults, have you ever sent a letter or a package through the post office and it didn't get to where it was supposed to go or it didn't get there on time or you're expecting something and it comes late or maybe you owe more postage? Yeah, they're not perfect and maybe that wasn't even their fault. But humans' promises aren't perfect, but God's promises already are, always are. If he said it in his word, we don't have to put a stamp on it. We can know that it's true. But God's promises will always be about what's most important. 
And the people of Israel, when their Messiah did come, when Jesus came to earth, they rejected him, ended up crucifying him on the cross because they thought he was going to be an earthly ruler right then. And as awesome as that would have been, as helpful to those people in the short term as that would have been for him to have given them freedom from the Roman rule and all of that, they would have still died in their sins. They needed a savior more than they needed temporary relief. And Isaiah chapter 53, another Old Testament passage, talks about God's promise about what's most important. Verse 4 says, Surely he, speaking prophetically of Jesus before he, about, again, about 600 years before he came, surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Jesus has borne those griefs, those sorrows. He knows what we're going through. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. for He was bruised for our iniquities on the cross there. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Jesus was whipped before he went to the cross. He had stripes from the horrible cat of nine tails whips that uh, were applied to Jesus before he even went to the cross. Verse 6, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him, on Jesus, the iniquity of us all. Jesus knew, God knew, that we would need His promise to be more than just a temporary ruler here on earth, more than just an earthly ruler. We would need Jesus to become our Savior. So His promise was awesome. It was so much bigger than what the people of Israel even knew that they had a hard time understanding it. Jesus' promises are always perfect. They're never late. They're always on time. And His promises will happen. But they wanted just an earthly ruler instead of what was most important, instead of the opportunity to have their sins forgiven. Now, Jesus will be an earthly ruler one day, and even now he wants to influence our lives and help us in so many ways. He is in control. But it reminded me of the silly game, Would You Rather? Now, I have this as a box, and I found it one time, and I've played it with some teens, I think even some children as well, and uh, maybe boys and girls, teens, you've played this with me, and uh, it can be a fun game. Let me just give you an example, because it's, uh, would you rather do this or that? Now, some of them get really weird, and they're always a lot of fun, and we'll usually have, you know, participants run to that side or that side, pick which one they want to be on, but here's one for you, just to get you thinking here. Would you rather work as a tester of computer games or as a tester of trampolines? I don't know, that one's tough. I do enjoy both. I think I'd have to go with trampolines there. I, I do enjoy jumping on a good trampoline, but uh, that would be the choice. Well, the people of Israel didn't understand that the choice had already been made. They didn't even have to choose between a savior that would forgive them of their sins if they would accept him and give them a home in heaven for all of eternity or a temporary ruler. That choice was already made. Unfortunately, they rejected Jesus because it didn't fit their plan. They thought that he wasn't the Messiah. They thought this doesn't fit. God's promises will always be about what's most important. And we can trust God and his timing, and we don't need to lose hope. So you might be waiting on God to meet a need. And the Bible tells us, my God shall supply all thy need. And God does meet our needs, but he does it in his timing, and he does it in his way. Let's trust and not lose hope. Isaiah and Jeremiah, written about 600 years before Jesus came to earth. In fact, soon after that, a couple hundred years or so after that, the Old Testament was completely finished. Book of Malachi written, done, all of the Old Testament books, done. And there wasn't a new word of Scripture for four, over 400 years. Jesus didn't come for 400 years. No new Bible. Nothing new on that front. But at the same time, God was at work. 400 years years of what seemed, I'm sure, like silence from God. But he was at work. He was doing great things. He was waiting for just the right time to bring his son, Jesus, into the world to offer salvation to every single one of us. God never comes early. He never comes late. He's always on time. His promises are always perfect. Let's trust him and not lose hope because God's promises are strong. Now, I wanted to illustrate that this would be kind of like an illustration of maybe if I make a promise. Now, hopefully it'd be stronger than one piece of paper. But boys and girls, teens, adults watching, do you think you could tear this piece of paper? Yeah, it wouldn't be anything, any trouble at all. And again, hopefully my promises to you would be a lot stronger than one piece of paper. But to use the comparison, if this is our promises, 
God's would be even stronger than a whole ream of paper. Now there's, I believe, 500 sheets of paper in here. And uh, you might be thinking, oh, I can tear that. Well, no, even if you take the outside coating, no, you're not going to tear through that. It'd be like tearing through a phone book. Not going to happen. But God's promises would be even stronger than that. So the next time you feel like losing hope, remember, God's got you. He's got promises that he will keep. It might seem like he's silent, like he's not doing anything, but God's at work. And if you're in his family, he's already promised to never leave you nor forsake you. He's already living in you, in your heart, and he's got you. Let's trust God and not lose hope. And then lastly, let's just simply remember that God keeps his promises. We've talked about it, but let's read about it. In Matthew 1, verse 21, here we are in the New Testament, about 400 years later, Jesus is coming. Verse 21, the angel says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Jesus came. He came to earth. He really did. People might have doubted it. People might have questioned it. People might have thought it would never happen. But Jesus did come. People may break their promises to you, but God never will. Let's take some time this November, the last few days there, and then into December to remember God's promises will never fail. He's strong. He will keep them. He did send Jesus. And let's remember all that he came to do for us, all that he wants to do for us even now. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this Christmas season. I pray that we'll enjoy the fun and the trees and the presents and, uh, you know, pretty lights and just so many positive things here during a difficult time with coronavirus cases on the rise and things changing even here at the church with being online only today and schools are up in the air a lot and things changing fast. I pray that we'll remember your promises. We'll remember what Jesus did for us coming to earth. Yes, we'll celebrate his death, burial, and resurrection for our sins as well. We celebrate that you came here to be one of us. You came here to live as one of us. You remained God, but you came here and lived as a person. Went through so much just for us. We thank you for it. Thank you that you never break your promises. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.